calling more public attention to climate change. Europe is running a series of concerts in partnership with MTV under the heading Play to Stop. The DJ, singer, songwriter and musician Moby took to the stage in Stockholm. He took time out to talk to Euronews. Bonjour Moby, merci pour cette interview. Why are you taking part in the Play to Stop campaign? I've been an environmental activist for quite a long time. Uh, I was raised by hippies who were very environmentally concerned. And there are a lot of different causes I'm involved in, but the one cause that to me is most important above all else is climate change. Because it's, it's the only issue that will potentially very drastically affect the lives of every person on the planet. And, and not to be overly melodramatic, but it also has the potential to alter the course of human history in potentially very, very negative ways, but also potentially positive ways as well. Do you think that governments are doing enough to fight climate change? I don't, I, I hate to say this, I don't think governments are really doing anything to fight climate change right now. Uh, governments are still subsidizing old industries. Governments are still subsidizing oil production. And one of the th most compelling aspects of climate change for me in terms of getting people to deal with it is appealing to their own self-interest. It's very, it's very simple. When someone in, in France or someone in Belgium or someone in Germany buys heating oil or they put gasoline in their car, they're sending money outside of their country. They're sending money to Venezuela, they're sending money to the United Arab Emirates, they're sending money to Iran. Whenever someone develops local energy sources, whether it's hydro, whether it's geothermal, whether it's wind or solar, they're keeping money in their country and they're supporting local industries. And to me, that's the, the best way to get people interested in climate change is saying, keep your money at home, you know, support support local industries, support industries that don't pollute. And uh, yeah, so I think other, otherwise it's very difficult for governments to legislate for climate change, you know, to, ch to combat climate change, because seemingly it's an issue that's not gonna affect us for 40 years or 50 years. So why should governments deal with it? But if you can present it to governments as a way of creating jobs, and dealing with economic uncertainty at home, I think that's a much more compelling way for governments to actually legislate regarding climate change. On a personal level, do you lead a green life? Well, I, it, not to um, tout my own environmental credentials, but I don't know how I could live a more green life. You know, I don't drive a car, I take public transportation, I am a vegan. Uh, I try to, whenever possible, eat locally, organically grown produce. Um, I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I live in an apartment building, which is so much more environmentally responsible than living in a house. Yeah, I, I try very hard to be as environmentally responsible as possible, but the only way environmentally responsible actions have any sort of like meaningful impact is the cumulative aspect of it. You know, me being environmentally responsible means nothing if I'm the only one doing it. Me being environmentally responsible is very, very meaningful if a hundred million people are doing it. So I, I never will brag about my environmental credentials because I'm just one person. If I can get a hundred million people to do similar things, then I can say that I've been a, a, good, a good force for change. When I tour, I try to tour in a carbon neutral way, which is, basically offsetting carbon emissions and trying to tour in an environmentally responsible way as possible. But again, it'd be great if every musician on the planet agreed to tour in a carbon neutral way. The carbon emissions from every musician on the planet is less than 0.001% of the carbon emissions from China in one day. So I think it's important to look at issues like carbon neutral touring it's more important to look at industrial output from the European Union, from the United States, from China, from India. You know, we only have so much time and we only have so much energy. I think we really need to focus on the most egregious examples of environmental irresponsibility.
Moby, avez-vous été surpris par les attaques Are you surprised by the attacks against Obama's health care plan? d'assurance de santé, d'assurance sociale. Well, the attacks on Obama's health care plan, it's almost, it's almost like a surrealist farce. You know, it's um, like, like an Ionescu. Is it, yeah, Eugene Ionescu, the, the, the playwright? Um, it's like, it's an absurdist, Dadaist farce because people, I mean, unfortunately, there's a long tradition of arrogance and ignorance in equal measure in the United States. But the attacks on Obama's health care plan are so ignorant and they're funded by the health care industry. So my, my favorite story about the attacks on Obama's health care in the United States is uh, a member of the House of Representatives was having a town hall meeting and there were a bunch of right-wing senior citizens and he asked a simple question. He said, who here is opposed to socialized medicine? And everybody raised their hand. And then his next question, who here is on Medicare and Medicaid? And everybody raised their hand. Medicare and Medicaid is socialized medicine. So what I'm surprised by is just how intense the attacks are on Obama and on healthcare, what I'm not surprised by is how ignorant Americans are once again. You know, Americans will never surprise me in their capacity to be angry and ignorant at the same time. Are lobbyists responsible for these attacks? Well, there are a lot of vested special interests who will lobby to protect their own business. So right now, healthcare in the United States is lobbying to protect healthcare the way it is. The insurance companies are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to protect the, situ the healthcare situation in the United States the way it exists because that is very lucrative for the healthcare industry. Um, the same thing with climate change. The oil companies, who are huge, I mean, BP and Shell and ExxonMobil, I mean, these are the biggest corporations on the planet. They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to keep things the way they are. Unfortunately, the way things are is terrible. <laughs> the healthcare, the status quo for healthcare in the United States is a disaster. The status care for, you know, environmentally speaking, in terms of petroleum production and energy production in general, it's a disaster. But it's a very lucrative disaster for companies, you know, for the healthcare industry in the United States and for the petroleum companies in the rest of the world. Okay. Thank you very much, Moby. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.